All right, well, Spring connects her audience. Let me go ahead and get started, guys. It's Joe Herrera and Spring Benson uh, coming to you live from both Utah and Las Vegas. We try to do a call once a week, and the subject is always pretty much the same, which is what is Real Broker? So, Spring, you and I were just talking about this. We both have been at the company for about two years. So I want to get into some of the nuts and bolts, but what what attracted you to real originally from oh you were I, you owned at the time a, a realty one group franchise, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was attracted for a couple of different things. I was attracted for um, the growth. Um, probably primarily that honestly, Joe, of, you know, when you own a brokerage, um, your audience is pretty much your 20 mile radius, maybe 30 miles that they're willing to drive to your office. And so your growth is pretty limited. And we, we now live in a world where everybody's connected via social media and technology. I mean, we're live streaming this across Facebook that can reach anywhere in the world. So it just felt really, um, encumbrancing of like, I can only grow in this little bubble. And I really loved the thought of, Hey, what if you could bring value, massive value to agents across the country and collaborate and work. And so that was the, that was the reason I was originally attracted to the model. And then, um, we all know there's other companies that have this model, but I was attracted to real because of, um, the opportunity of the, the real itself provided uh, with early stages, um, the collaboration, um, the community, just the different things. And so, Joe, I think we both agree, best decision that we've ever made. Hands oh, down. for sure. I mean, I think, I think um, marrying my wife was number one. I think uh, partnering with Taylor was number two. That happened in 2005. And then partnering with you and in coming to real was certainly number three. Um, I think it's, it's so much different than I thought it was going to be. Um, spring dropped off. I'm sure she'll have, hop back on. Um, what happened to me? There you go. I don't know. You, you hopped off and now you're back on. Um, but, I, but I think it's, it's different than probably what we thought it was going to be. Um, down. Down. In, such, in such a, in such a better way. Um, so let's talk about the nuts and bolts briefly. Yeah. Um, real Sharon does a really good job of explaining this. Like real is not the destination. It's the vehicle. And so I think what you and I are both hyper addicted to with this company is the principles of collaboration with which we work. You've been at KW Realty One Group and, and possibly some others. Taylor and I were Remax guys, and then we owned, you know, some independent stuff. Real estate is a highly, highly competitive industry where yeah. people, it's it's very cutthroat. So I, I, I want to end, you know, with that collaborative environment and what our world really looks like. But let's talk nuts and bolts. So spring 85-15 split, it's highly competitive with what the industry offers. Everybody knows that Every brokerage either functions on the, the, the way the, bro the brokerage runs is either they charge their agents a split or they charge them a transaction fee. Yep. The transaction fee thing for somebody who produces is almost like a cheater's way to make people feel like they're getting a good deal. Because oh, it's okay. like, if it's like, hey, Spring, we'll do $500 a file for your team. You're like, oh, we do 600 units a year. That'll cost us a fortune. Yeah. So explain for people kind of the 85-15 split and maybe then where it runs up against a cap and why that cap is important. Yeah. I mean, the cap is absolutely a crucial part because to your point, so I came from Keller Williams, which I'm a huge KW fan, KW built, like love them. And part of what I loved when I came from KW was that they did have a cap. So if you you got to a certain point, you capped out. Well, then to your point, Joe, I moved to a flat fee brokerage and yes, my agents were paying less per transaction, but mm -hmm. it never ended. Right. Like, the cap right. didn't stop. And, and to be honest with you, I didn't care because I owned the brokerage, but if I didn't own the brokerage, like I, there was no way I'm paying that like 
a per transaction is that much for 600 plus transactions, right? So the beautiful thing about a cap is that like the 8515 split, when you cap, you cap. Like you, and then you move to a small transaction fee um, that you pay because the company, here's the thing what, what about realtors, like you're going to pay your cap. So 8515 split to $12,000. If you're on a team, you can be on a team cap of either four or $6,000. So it's half of that $12,000 cap. Now, just because you and I cap or our team agent caps doesn't mean that real broker still doesn't have fees that have to be paid, such as like accounting and a broker and all of that. And so there is a small transact per transaction fee after you cap because they still have expenses to process your file and your check, but it's so minimal and right. it's just a part of doing business. Um, yeah. But to answer your question, if we didn't have a cap, we would be paying hundreds of thousands of dollars that I don't know about you, but I don't believe there's any brokerage worth paying hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, so how do you explain to people? Because for me, it's so important to understand that there is a world in which rather than thinking of your brokerage as an, as a liability, you can think of it as an asset. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I both decided real was the place for us to run our teams mm -hmm. because Owning brokerages were assets for us, but yeah. there was really not a vehicle with which we could do the same thing of taking, like as the owner of a brokerage, putting it into an asset class for our agents was impossible. Yeah. This is a high level conversation, but this is what you and I do when we talk. Real enables not just you as a team leader, or a former brokerage owner, but, but you know, Jace or some yeah. of the people in your world to so take their cool. brokerage relationship from liability, meaning I have to hang my license somewhere and I have to pay a cap or transaction fees or whatever into because I hang my license somewhere and because I pay a cap and transaction fees, it then brings into my world the added benefits yep. that take it from a liability class to an asset class. So how yeah. do you explain that to other team owners versus how do you explain that to an agent that, that needs to understand it? Well, there's two sides to that, right? So when I made the decision to join real, a big factor of that was, Hey, they have the revenue share and they have this a stock program. And I don't know about you, but most agents don't have a retirement plan. Like they don't have a lot of money saved. And so real gives that opportunity of like, Hey, you can put part of each one of your commissions. Um, they'll just take it and then out of your commission and then they'll do a stock matching. So they're giving you money every single month for that retirement. So when I made the decision to move, I said, Hey guys, like, this is what makes sense for me because I would like to, as a team, as a team owner and as a broker owner, there was a couple of things I already talked about. It didn't make sense for me to um, just have my small audience. It also didn't make sense for the liability of owning a brokerage. Like yeah. I didn't want to employ a broker and an accountant and all of these different things. And so I was like, let me give up all of that to somebody else. And um, but on top of that, it created an even playing field, Joe, that my agents had the same opportunity that I had. Like right. they could participate in stock if they wanted and they could participate in revenue share if they wanted. And so to go from saying, hey, is a liability to a to an asset or a benefit, it really is helping understand like there's multiple ways to make money with helping grow Brill as a company. I'll tell you this. I think you and I are prime examples. Um, I don't know about you, but Joe, did you know who I was prior to two years ago? I knew of you. Like maybe like, because we were in the same room, like, you know, yeah, because we were in a mastermind together. Right. But I didn't know who you were. Right. Do you think over the last two years, your brand and who you are has amplified a billion times? A hundred percent. Yeah. Same with me. People are always like, hey, spring real sounds great, but I'm not you. And I like to be like two years ago. Did you even know who my, my what my name was? Now, I right. wasn't me either two years ago, right? Exactly. And so so the opportunity, the reason I say this, 
Rill provides a platform if you choose. Now you have right. to be willing to put yourself out there and be on a Facebook Live at 12 o'clock on a <laughs> Thursday. But it provides a platform if you choose to do it that you can go out and amplify your voice, your business to go in and create whatever you want to create. And so yeah. um, it's the same with my agents. It creates an opportunity for them to what you said with Jace. Um, he's bringing in people, he's helping them. He's like spring, it pays my car payment every month. Like right. how cool is that? And so the reason I brought that up, Joe, of like you and I, because it's really what I believe about this company is you can have it be whatever you want it to be. Not everybody right. wants to be on Facebook live at noon, sure. uh, but if they do, they can make that happen. Well, and I think your point is so good for a lot of reasons. One of them being like, I am, I'm obsessed with golf. Like, as you know, this, it's like, you are <laughs> Joe, sh shut up about golf, right? I'm literally wearing Marky Mark's golf brand t-shirt right now. Like Marky Mark owns municipal, which is awesome. Okay. I got to stop you really fast. I have just started following him. I don't know why I didn't follow him before, but I love his municipal. Like he is repping right. his brand on 100%. every level. A hundred percent. So here's, here's the cool part. I'm a really good golfer, but I'm not Tiger Woods. But I still have figured out a way to, to leverage golf in my life as therapy, as exercise. It's the way I connect with my children, the way I connect with my friends. There is a temptation from somebody who sees you and what you built or other individuals at the company who, you know, we've been there for two years. You came over, you were agent, whatever, 1,800, 1,500. Yeah. I was agent 2,000 or 2,100 or whatever it was. Yeah. Now it's at 10,000 agents and people are like, yeah, well, that's great. I can never be spring. Well, two things. Number one, you don't know if you could be spring or not until you find yourself in an ecosystem like this. And number two, it's not as though spring is the only person in this world who benefits from this world and who enjoys this world and who, right? So like, I think there's something to be said for as an agent, here's, here's, let's get into, so there is a cost. Oh, you got to go back to your grade at golf. Cause you were, there was an analogy here and you, well, I'm not, I, so my point is I'm not Tiger Woods, but I yeah. still enjoy it. Right. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I'm not the greatest golfer of all time, but I still enjoy it. So that it's like saying, if you can't be Gary Vaynerchuk, you might as well not be an influencer and use social media for your benefit. Or if you can't be yeah. Grant Cardone, you might as well not. Or if you if you can't be Spring Benson or Brad McCallum or Joe Herrera or Eric Hatch or whatever, like, is there a place for you at real? Like, two things. You, you're pr people can probably be better than me. Number and one, me. go, go me. or or you, and go, so go do it. And number two, this world. I I loved what you said about the car payment thing because it's like, as an agent. You pay your 85-15 split until you cap. Your cap is either $12,000 as a solo practitioner or team leader or $6,000 as a team member, $4,000 as a platinum elite team that does 250 units plus or whatever it is. Once you've done that, the question becomes, how do you erase that money you pay? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's cool to have a low cap, but it's cooler to have a rather than a, a a liability like you look at your brokerage and say well what does it cost you every year oh i pay a 12k cap and 6k in transaction fees so i'm eighteen thousand dollars in that's lower than what people would pay you know at, at other competitive brokerages but what's better is not i pay 18 it's well i invest 18 into my brokerage and i get back 24. So it's like, it's so easy to get back 24. Here's yeah. how it happened. Over the course of a year or two, you have six friends who do a decent amount of business that choose to come and be a part of your world. Six. Because through the revenue share program, if you have an agent that pays their cap, you as their friend, that sponsors them into the company will get $4,000 per year per, per agent that, that reaches the 12K cap. Mm -hmm. So now you've paid in $18,000 and you can get back $24,000 in revenue share. Therefore, 
if I was to say to that agent, forget about being, you know, Mount Rushmore level of a, of a real agent, just six people. In two years, that's one person every four months is like, hey, I'd love to hear about what you guys are doing. It looks like it's something cool. Mm -hmm. Now, on a balance sheet, your cost to belong to the brokerage would be 18. Your return would be 24. So every single accountant in the world would say, oh, cool. You made $6,000 by belonging to that company. Like, yeah. it didn't cost you anything. You actually made $6,000. So talking about becoming a millionaire through revenue share is unobtainable. It just It's just so like out right. there yeah. while, while possible. Yeah. It's out there. Yeah. But I love the car payment thing. Yeah. It's like, hey, listen, if your car payments $500 a month, that's $6,000 a year. If you have two friends two. Yeah. that come to the company, your car payments paid. Yeah. I, Joe, I'm pretty passionate about this just because it's changing so many people's lives, including my own, including yours, right? Including a lot of people. And so it's like, the thing that I think is is really interesting is what you just said um, earlier was like, you have to hang your license somewhere. Right. Like that's real estate 101. Like you have to hang it somewhere. So you might as well hang it somewhere that there's a benefit. Like there's a benefit that you can participate on top of um, all the things that real offers to help you sell homes. Like, the thing that I think is really cool about what the environment provides is forget about revenue share, forget about stock, sure. forget about like, who cares? When you are part of it, their whole online platform is all about collaboration and community and growth. There are classes all day, every day. You can literally log in and watch taught by people like yourself, myself, Eric Hatch, Katie Day, Robin Cole, like you name it. And then on top of that, and it doesn't matter who you sign in as a sponsor, like you can, right. you can watch and participate in, in, in any of that. And then on top of that, there's massive community of like growth and relationships. Like think about in our world right now, how many friendships have formed um, that you and I know of, that they're now collaborating across the country, doing webinars and like even our even our girls like Angie and Jillian and all you know what I mean like everybody is starting right. to create these relationships that are helping them grow personally and professionally and it's cool like I'll tell you you and I had an experience in uh in uh, Atlanta um end of last year and I um I would tell you I probably joined the company for revenue share let's just call it what it is. <laughs> But I sat in that room and I was like, okay, if revenue share didn't exist, I would still want to be surrounded by these humans. Right. I still want to be in business with, with everybody in this room. And that was a big aha to me. Like we are really creating something pretty cool. Because the traditional experience we have in real estate is, Hey, Bob, it's good to see you. Like, but, and then we, he's sitting at his desk, I'm sitting at my desk and it's kind of like, oh, that's great. I saw your new listing. Congratulations. And then like you sit down and you're like, F that guy, right? Like it's, that's yeah. the real estate industries. It's like, oh my gosh, girl, you're crushing it. Freaking, I hate that her, you know? Yeah. Where in real, at real, there is this collaborative environment to where there may still be some hyper local competition. I don't know that we're ever going to get away from, you know, if you and I are in the same market, my guys are trying to list one, two, three main street, your people are trying to list one, two, three main street. Somebody's going to win that listing. So there may still be that competitive thing, but okay. what real gives us is out of market hyper collaboration that enables us to then cross state boundaries, and even cross, I love Amy Younger and said, it's the brokerage without borders, that collaboration we're talking about, it's not about you knowing how to recruit to your local office. Every real estate agent I know knows other real estate agents in other markets. And so if we're having experiences worth talking about, 
And we're talking about those experiences with our, wow, it's crazy. I've been in collaboration world for six months after being in competition world for six yeah. years. I choose collaboration world. And somebody's like, hey, I'd love to learn about that. Then then you you can you can kill two birds or benefit in two ways. Like you can build that collaborative environment or join it. Yeah. And then you can be compensated for it. Well, I think too, even if you're not compensated for it, it's an interesting dynamic right now. Like, I don't know about you, but there's people like in Utah, for example, that are not in our quote unquote network, if that's what you want to right. call it. I freaking love them. I'm like, hey, you know, you're doing some cool stuff. Like, thanks for repping the company like that I'm proud yeah. to be a part of. Can we, can we, can we do some cool stuff? Right. And so I think it yeah. creates, it creates the the relationship, but then it is like, oh, like you don't benefit, I don't benefit. But the cool thing is, Joe, is we can if we want to. Like, so yeah. we can go and co-sponsor um and bring people the company together and and eliminate that like competitive component of it. Um, but I just think like, well, you know what I love about what's happening is people are thinking outside the box. They're not just showing up to their local office being like, I gotta sell a house. They're like, yeah. how can I provide value to the agents in my world? Like I'll do a mastermind or we're seeing these events pop up across the country or we're doing webinars or, yeah. you know, and it's just, it's just a cool thing to be a part of. So let's talk about the stock program really quick, because one of the things you said, which I think is so important, was um, we're, not all of us are really good at managing our, our money. <laughs> I know for me, like I do two things really well, Spring, really well. Number one, creating money. And number two, spending money. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like world class money. For my family, I could tell you for the Herrera family, at least my line, I am the best money creator in, in my family history. And I make it rain, uh, not at like strip clubs and stuff, but at least on like <laughs> golf equipment. And so it's that middle part that's tricky. And yeah. it's how do I put some aside for a rainy day? How do I make wise investments? So talk about your thoughts or your experience on the stock program. So cool. Because I think this is like a really cool life hack that yeah. other real estate brokerages, let, let's just be honest, it's just not part of what they do. Yeah. Other companies do it. Like yeah. if you're at Starbucks and you're like, oh yeah, I worked at Starbucks starting in you know 1998 and I would do their little stock program every year. And then those guys are like, yeah, we're millionaires now. Mm -hmm. So maybe kind of what's your well, 30,000 views of the stock program? Yeah, let me, let me say this. So really quickly, to your point, I'll get into the stock program, but my dad is a great example of this. He worked an average job his whole entire life, maybe made $50,000, maybe a year annually, yeah. like his whole life, maybe less than that, 35 to 50,000. But what he did do is he participated in the company stock program, 401k, whatever they offered. And so when it came time for retirement, he actually was able to retire and and live the lifestyle he chooses to live whereas other people in my life were like us self-employed great at spending money great at making money and now cannot retire because they have nothing to, yeah. to just set aside so what i love about real stock program is that it is something that you can participate now how it works is you get to choose so when you fill out your ICA to join the company, you can say, I want in for the stock program or I'm opting out. It's your choice, what you want to do. If you choose to participate in the stock program, every time you sell a home based on if you prior to you cap. So if it's prior to you capping, they'll take out 5% of what you, your commission would be 5% of that. And they'll put it in a Morgan Stanley Shareworks. Um, and they will buy real stock for you with, with that 5%. At the end of the month, they will they will give you an additional, um, Joe, it's 15% now, right? Because it's changed. Yes. Yep. Okay. They will give you an additional 15% of what you bought. So let's just say for easy math for me, you bought $1,000 worth of real stock. Well, they're going to give you $150 of real stock on top of that. 
And so um, the, when you do your first transaction, you get a Morgan Stanley ShareWorks app. So you don't get it before you do your first transaction. And everything sits in this ShareWorks app. It's your money. Like I could go out and close. I, I could easily go and say, hey, I need money today. I'm going to sell this stock. And the money would be in my bank account tomorrow. Um, but what they do is so they match you with that. After they cap, after you cap, you can put 10% of your commissions in. And then they'll grant you back an additional, um, it's 30%, right? Or has it changed from that? I think, yeah, I, right yeah, it's I think it's 25. Gone um, yeah. It's gone down. So don't quote me on that. But they'll grant you back the additional. Once they grant you back the, the additional, same thing. It's there. Now, here's the caveat, what you guys need to understand. If they're giving you stock based off your capping, you have to stay at the company for a year for that stock to vest if they're giving it to you, anything you purchased is yours. You could leave tomorrow. It's yours. But if they're like, Hey, thank you so much, Joe, for being part of our company. You have to stay for a year. Now they also give you stock for capping. They give you stock for hitting elite status, which is where if you um, cap and then you pay post capping transaction fees up to $6,000, that is um, an elite status. And they'll grant you back $18,000 worth of stock. And they also give you stock when you attract somebody to the company. Like those are all ways that they real is like, thank you for helping us grow our company. Thank you for here is a, here is a gift or reward for you. Now, if they give you those stocks for either capping or agent attraction, it's a three year vesting. So they are saying, hey, if we're going to give you this money, we want to make sure you're seeing at the company for three years. But it's sitting in your Morgan Stanley and you can see that it's right there and how much it's worth um, on the vesting. Joe, it's cool. Like, I mean, I yeah. randomly will log in and I, to your point earlier about these agents, I had one of my agents reach out to me and he's like, Spring, I have all of these um, stock vesting, like things that I need to sign. He's like, what is this for? I'm like, well, did you opt into the stock program? He's like, yeah, but I don't understand. I'm like, well, they gave you every time you closed a deal, they gave you stock because um, you bought stock. And he was like, this is the best thing. <laughs> so, um, again, it's, per it's by choice, but it's a cool way to save some money and, and create some future wealth. I am a believer. I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know. But I'm a believer in the company. And I would assume the stock is going to go up from where it's at over the course of the however many years. And so it's just a cool savings account that, account that you can have an upswing if you, yeah. if you invested. I mean, there's, you know, like you said, there's, there's the three ways agents can get stock. Mm -hmm. I try to maximize them all. Same. So I try to bring people into the company. And now the, the stock award at one point for bringing an agent in the company, I think was a thousand shares thousand of stock. Shares. Yeah. yeah. Now I think it's 50 or something like that. I, um, we just, we're hitting new milestones of growth. And so obviously as a company grows, some of the awards are, you know, they incentivize more heavily early on. Um, but this elite aid agent one is the hack that if you're closing 25 to 30 transactions per year as a solo practitioner or a team that does, you know, obviously more than that, the elite agent hack is is crazy and it becomes hard because you know every once in a while somebody will say like hey joe how like how much does it cost to be at real and i'm like that's just a, it's a harder conversation to answer because i don't i don't look at anything that happens in the company as a cost because yeah. the yeah. returns in both stock acquisition and revenue share and everything else is so much greater than what i pay in that it's hard yeah. for me to talk about the cost that's like that's like saying, well, how much did your golf membership cost you last year? I could come up with a number for it, but what I can't quantify is the fact that before my son left for Africa, we spent three days every afternoon, three days a week together playing golf. And so I'm like, I don't consider it a cost. There's so much benefit. The Elite Agent Award, as you mentioned, once you've paid your 12K cap and 8K in transaction fees, you can receive 16K for being elite plus an $8,000 community award in stock. So now if you're a math geek like me, you've paid in 18,000 and you've gotten back $24,000 worth of stock. So it's like, 
Well, if you do 25 to 30 transactions a year, you'll get the elite award. And if you get involved in the community, right now, I think one of the ways they define it is being willing to teach a class once a month. Mm -hmm. And so like, I don't know about most educators, but 12 hours worth of work, meaning teaching 12 one hour classes to get $8,000 is like eight, 750 to $800 an hour for lessons. You and I have already been on here for 32 minutes and I don't think there's 8,000 bucks coming in, right? And so it's yeah. like, that's a big, big opportunity that most agents really need to take a look at. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. It's so interesting, this model. Um, you and I have talked about this before. So I had um, I had the opportunity at Inman right before Inman to um, do the brand wars. And we talked mm -hmm. about this. Like I represented Real and Colton was up there representing Real. And we had like KW and EXP and whatnot. And um, Tamir was in the audience, right? And you were sitting there with him. And the whole like question or the thing of like, is Real an MLM, right? Mm -hmm. And I answered it totally incorrectly, you guys. I was like, <laughs> well, I mean, I could see why you would say that. I mean, we do get we do get money and whatnot, but it's not like we're selling essential oils or something like right people, candles people, or whatever. Yeah, people have to hang their license, so the company is is um is providing a value, and you have to hang your license somewhere. Got off stage. And, um, and you were to Tamir and he's like, great job. He goes, you know, I don't love the question about an MLM. And I was like, okay, uh, how would you answer this? You were standing right there. Right. And he was like, we've got to, we've got to lose this dialogue around, um, anything around this because it's not true. He's like, the way we choose to look at it is, um, the company needs to grow. And instead of us going and paying Facebook ads or Instagram or um, marketing expenses, you guys are our marketing expense. Right. You, Joe Herrera, are the one who is going out and selling. And we're compensating you through that with revenue share and stock program. And that was like a big aha to me of like, you're right. Like they're just creating an army of people to say, hey, this is a really cool company. Like you want to explore what it looks like. And I think when that shifted, it was like, I think everybody should participate and be proud and provide that value. So I do want to know, because we've, that's what we've been talking about, right? Stock revenue share, like mm -hmm. being this. And it's like, maybe take a little different look at it. Um, of I'm at a company who provides massive value and I can get paid for telling people about it. So. Well, and and should there not, I mean, the, the, when you and I entered into real estate, I think I, I got in 2001. I, I don't remember. Were you 08, 09? I'm trying to remember when you got in. No, I got in like 2002, 2003. Oh, okay. So we've been in, well, you're like 10 years younger than me. So I'm just trying to. <laughs> Whatever. We're the same age. <laughs> um, there, it was a different world. There were, in order to run an ad, you had to hire an ad exec. In order to be on the radio, you had to go to a studio. Taylor and I had a billboard and someone had to professionally design it. Now we are, we are in the world of, of influencership. Yep. Real is an influencership brokerage, meaning the lives of the agents are the advertising. Like I have friends who are like, dude, yeah, my wife has, you know, you, well, your son does it with TikTok, but my wife has, you know, 200,000 followers on Instagram and she gets paid to wear somebody's sandals. Like that, sure. what? Like that didn't even make freaking sense, right? So real, rather than thinking of it as an MLM, <laughs> thinking of it as an influencer-based real estate model where if you are able to positively influence the lives of the agents around you yes. by being happy about the world you're in, the company's like, well, yeah, we'd rather pay you to be awesome, to talk about the awesomeness you live in and to inspire your friends to want to be part of that. We all understand influencership really well. I think it's so easy to paint our brokerage into a 
as you said, like into a corner and say like, oh, you're an MLM. Well, it's like, well, then so is Instagram. And so is like, so yeah. is influencers. So is Gary Vaynerchuk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not about, it's not about MLM. It's about influencership. And like, why, why does Spring, why is Spring Benson succeeded so massively at a company like this? It's because every single real estate brokerage in the world would die to have you repping their brand. Like I'm wearing Marky Mark's freaking golf shirt right now. Like I'm representing his brand. Yeah. And, and, and so for you, like you are an, an amazing ambassador for the company and the company's like, well, cool. Yeah. We'll just have you do that. Like yeah. we'll just have you go talk about your awesome world. And then other people are going to want to be about, Oh, great. We don't have to do a hot air balloon. We don't have to make everybody wear gold jackets. We don't have to run TV commercials and radio commercials for a company yeah. to grow. Like, awesome. Let's just do that. And you know what? I'm proud to do it. Like, that's the thing. Like they, the company has helped amplify who I am, but they've also, I've helped amplify them and they've helped amplify right. me. Right? right. Like they provide a really cool platform. And so back to how this originally started uh, the conversation too, of like, I think you guys can turn it into anything you want it to be. You know, like yeah. I'm sitting in my house in Salt Lake City, Utah, having a conversation with all of you on here and Joe's in Vegas. Like it can be whatever you want it to be. And so yeah. that's what I love about it. Um, so so we've got, we've yeah. got a few minutes left. Yeah. To, so obviously yeah. you've got more insight into the tech stack portion of it because of what Brian, your husband does. He runs Sisu. Yeah. So like, I don't know about you, but for me, when I was running my independent brokerage, I didn't, if I was going to go buy a car or a house or whatever, again, I owned the brokerage. It would take time, 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever, yeah. to get a year to date commission income statement and all that fun stuff to be able to provide to the mortgage lender to show them how much money I made. Well, Reels Tech Stack to begin with starts with an amazing app that shows us year-to-date commission, deals in escrow. Um, you can manage your files through it. You can see your stock ownership in it. You can see your network and who the people you need to be loving on are. You can see your revenue share paid, pending revenue share, commission paid, pending commission. Like it's really, sometimes we take it for granted, yeah. right? Like it, like yeah. if you've got a hardworking spouse that loves you and is faithful to you, sometimes you you lose sight, you lose perspective on like, wow, I really am lucky to be in a relationship that's that's great and whatever. I think from a tech perspective, sometimes I lose sight of the fact that the app is rad. Like yeah. what, what possession the team at Real Build is is game changer. Yeah, I check it every day, like multiple times a day. I'll screenshot it and send it over to you. Um, here's the thing, like devil's advocate. Every brokerage has technology. They might just not, they might not own it, but like, if you're going to join a brokerage, it's not a mom and a pop. You're going to have most, most of their offerings are going to say, Hey, here's a fee and you can have a CRM or sky slope or dot loop or whatever. I will tell you reels is sleek. Like it's legit. It runs um, fabulously. So like Joe said, you can see everything. Like I literally can see everything happening. Um, but what I think is really cool that I think that most people don't know about even the tech stack is there's no monthly fee for tech. So I will tell you, like when I was at other brokerages and I was paying a monthly tech fee and it was like, I don't even use this tech, like, but I have to mm -hmm. pay it because I'm part of your brokerage. So you only pay for the technology you want. So there, if you want to get like a chime, they have a, uh, they have a discount with them and you pay for that if you want. The other thing I think is really cool about what Real is doing is um, they understand that the long-term play with the consumer is the consumer experience is that um, is all about the consumer experience. So streamlining it. And so the technology is being built out to where like as the agent, you'll start being able to communicate with your client. I think Pratesh talked about this um, in the next year. But right now, as it is, like we can order title, we can order mortgage, we can order through their companies and just clicking the button. And it's like a streamlined process. On top of it as well, if you choose to, there is an opportunity for certain people in certain markets where they're opening 
that you can be in a JV on title and mortgage with your um, with Brill's title and mortgage company, which I think is fantastic. I mean, I've been in other ecosystems that those things were only offered to a few elite people. And now it's like it's offered to really anybody if it's in your market. You know, like yeah. there's an opportunity there. And so it's like real really is like, let us give back to you. And their tech is the foundation of, of being able to streamline that. Yeah. There's a priority relationship with Chime. You can get Chime for a, a fraction of the cost of what you would get it directly through Chime because yeah. of Reels pr uh, priority relationship. They just launched a signature uh, application to where you don't have to have a third party Authenticine type of app. Um, they're just, they're always forward thinking. We, we just launched an AI or, or is launching soon. Uh, a Neo, which is a, going to be like AI for real estate agents. So like real time advice and guidance, you know, that, that you're getting from, from the, the world of AI, which is something we should all be becoming more and more comfortable with. We have a, an inter office, workplace account, 10,000 real estate professionals on there, training, branding, you know, like advice, referrals. inspiration, referrals. Yeah. There's a, there's a real golf network we're putting together. Um, Are you serious event. right now? Right. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I love it. Yeah. We're putting together in Florida, we're going to go play uh, and do a little like mini event and, and golf. And so it's like, guys, the first time I heard about Uber, I thought it was crazy. I'm like, I'm not going to go get in somebody's car and get raped or drugged or whatever. This is nuts. I'm not doing that. I'll go get in a taxi and get raped or drugged or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, like, it took me a while to become comfortable with like some college kid is going to show up and grab me in their mm -hmm. Toyota and drop me off at the hotel. And it's on my time. And it's, there is security because people, right? Yeah. Well, with we're so used to the traditional real estate model of the, you know, I, I, the old guy sitting in the corner, that's your broker and he's a wise old sage and your office and all that fun stuff. We're so used to that, that when we hear of this ecosystem of influencership, a company that's willing to make every agent an owner, the company that's willing to do JVs with every agent, the company that's willing to say like, if you are an influencer or somebody who's willing to use influence to help us grow the company, we're going to pay you for it. Mm -hmm. A company who wants to like scratch out themselves on your P and L statement as a liability and massively add themselves of an, as an asset, it like it, it requires some additional thinking or some thinking outside the box. So I put up their spring for our Instagram accounts, yeah. Um, if anybody has any questions, always reach out. This will yeah. be shared on Facebook. This will be turned into a YouTube video and a podcast and all that fun stuff. So if you're hearing this while you're driving, it's just at Joe Herrera. It's probably easier to think of at Real Spring B. Um, <laughs> shoot, shoot us any questions you guys have. Um, if if this was sent to you by somebody who's at Real hit them up and say, Hey, they mentioned this. How does this work? Like we are open, we are collaborative. We, um, we, so I guess one last thing spring, talk about one reel. So yeah. in this ecosystem, it lends itself to, um, communities. It lends itself to, uh, hyper collaboration. But if not controlled, it could lend itself to alienation. Like, yeah. well, us 10 or 20 people are just going to run and do our own thing. Yeah. We're trying with one reel to be more collaborative, more open. I don't care who your sponsor is. Let's just grow together. So maybe yeah. maybe talk to that a little bit. Yeah, I'm a fan. I mean, I don't know that I necessarily at first I was like, what? What are we talking about? Because <laughs> it's different, right? Right. But um, the way that it works is like, you can join real and you're going to pick who you want to be in business with, meaning like who your sponsor is of like who you want to have conversations with and who you want to grow with and, and, and have that deeper relationship. Right. But that doesn't mean it alienates you from the rest of the company. It doesn't mean right. you can't participate in the other things. And so what I love about one real is, is to, um, is that it's basically like, 
come join the company, plug into whatever you want to plug into, collaborate with whoever you want to collaborate with, and let's all grow together. Um, it's cool. Actually, Joe, I uh, yesterday I had a woman, I had a shadow day in Salt Lake City that um, I had four or five teams um, come to. And this girl, she she's like, hey, I'm here from so-and-so's office. I'm like, oh, cool. How is she? She's like, oh, we're coming to real. I'm like, oh, you are? She's like, yeah, we need you as a sponsor. I'm like, <laughs> oh, cool. Well, like, when are you doing it? She's like, we just signed in yesterday. Um, so I was like, well, have her hit me up. Like, let me help you guys. Right, right. But what was cool, why my point of this is, so I logged in my app today because I was like, is she in there? And sure enough, she's in there, but it's a co-sponsorship. Hmm. So she named me with somebody else, which great, like, fantastic. She obviously felt value in like, hey, I want to be in Springs world and I want to be in so-and-so's world. And that's right. the whole point of like, it's one real, like whatever is going to make you feel great. I'll tell you this, last thing I'll end on this. I was looking at other companies before I joined real. And one of the conflicts I actually had internally, like I found massive value in who I was looking at going into business with, but I was going to have to pick I was like, mm. same company, but I was going to have to pick right. who I was going to go in alignment with. And um, and it was hard because they both had different things that they offered me, right? And um, the really cool thing about this is that's no longer a factor. Like, if you're like, hey, I, I want to be and I want to be in the mix, then just come join us. We'd love to have you. It's it's one real. You're welcome to anything we do. And it's it's, it's fun. We're having fun right now. Amen. That was awesome. Thank you, Spring, so much, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, listening to the podcast, whatever it is. Hit us up. Ask us questions. Hit up the friend that sent you this. You know, you owe it to yourself. I think what I'll, what I'll choose to end on is we all love to go back to 2011 and say, if I could go back to 2011, I would buy 15 houses and I'd be retired sitting on the beach now. And I would say to that person, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> One of my favorite things to say to my buddies is like, you won't. Because they'll say like, I'm going to tell so-and-so such and such. And I'm like, you won't. It's almost like calling somebody out on their behalf. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. You won't. You won't go back to 2011 and buy a whole bunch of houses yeah. if you're not taking an opportunity like this serious. We, yeah. we are at 10,000 agents. We're going to get to 50,000 agents. Oh, the sure. question is, when that happens, are you going to be sitting there going like, in 2023, I was listening to Joe and Spring, and now Spring is, you know, the, the you real know, a, a billionaire, <laughs> and she lives on an island and whatever. Like, I could have, like, I wish I could go back to 2023 and just call Spring and be like, I'm coming to real, and like, how do we grow this thing? Because I would have gone, and I would have built such a big business. You won't. Or you will, and hearing this and seeing this is your wake-up call to realize we're building something awesome. This company is amazing. Tamir, Sharon, Pritesh, everybody involved in the company, we're going to change and continue to change the industry. Listen, Real is the fastest growing real estate company on earth. We encourage you to take it serious. Don't think about 2011. Think about 2023 because... This is going to be the opportunity that if you don't take serious, you're going to look back in 10 years and go like, I wish I could go back to 2023. Guys, it's 2023 right now. Let's talk. Hit us up. Spring, thank you so much. Much love you guys.